this is shell head, which is probably best recognized by its very distinct feature of having an oil stain on the ground. And if you clicked on this video to see me do the ignition on a Dyna, you should probably head to the makeup tutorial part of YouTube. I won't be switching out this ignition though. It's gonna be the one for my personal bike, the white shovel head in the back, but we'll have to dig that out, so bear with me. So first you want to take off your point cover which is held in place by two screws or bolts or I don't know what you use I mean they're right here and if you don't know where your ignition is you probably shouldn't go and switch swap it out for a digital one so anyway we're gonna remove these studs I don't care what position my crank is in yet so we're gonna do a full setup from like a basic setting from zero so this is your ignition plate uh, it should come loose with a 9 16 wrench fairly easy like that pull everything out oh there's another screw here usually they are I don't know if you can see this. Usually this is like a, a slip-on type connector, but this one is a bolt for any, any sort of reason. So I'm gonna loosen it up. And you can take out the entire ignition plate. We're gonna take all of this out. I don't need this. Take this out. It should come out like that, but it comes out along with your ignition is this advanced unit it throws the weights out once while it's spinning and you're gonna need this if you replace to a Dyna S or you can upgrade to a new one but this one is fairly new so we're just gonna reuse this we're gonna pop that back in oh man that seal needs to be replaced I didn't see that so it's not there anymore take out the old cable we're not gonna use it anymore so take out the old cable it's rats through here and up there somewhere into the let's take a look under the hood where is that going i don't know i do know actually it's going to the coil so once you took out your points plate it should look like this with the advanced weights still in place you're gonna take out the cable that came from the points plate you can get rid of this you don't need it anymore there's a new cable on your dyna ignition unscrew the cable take out the old cable so here we have the new ignition, which is a Dynatech Dyna S, I believe it's called. And this is your Dyna S ignition. Comes with the cable, comes with an installation guide, which obviously you're not gonna need because you're watching a video on how to install a Dynatech Dyna S electronic ignition installation. We're just gonna throw this away and install this. To ease the installing, I'm gonna lift the rear end of the bike using my, I don't know what it's called, lift? Is it a lift? I don't know. So I put it in fourth gear so I can turn the crank without having to use the kickstarter, which makes it easier to see the advanced timing mark, which is behind the timing hole nut. Break that loose. So now I'm gonna turn the back wheel, hoping we can turn the flywheel and eventually get to see the timing advance mark. Now we've got the spark plugs out. We're gonna move back to the to this one, which should be right there in the middle, which means we're at the timing advance mark now. We're gonna go to the other side to see if we're on the compression stroke. You should be able to see it through the spark plug hole. You can see if the valve is open or not to know if you're on the compression stroke, but I'm gonna show you how you can check it on the other side. We're gonna take the front, cylinder push your covers off 
this is going to be fun with one hand. I'm already dropping this shit, man. All right, next one. Come on. All right. So I lifted the pushrod covers and now you can check if one of the valves are open or not. It should be able to spin between your fingers depending on which sort of lifters you have, solids or hydraulic, but you should be able to spin them. So we have established that we're on the front cylinder compression stroke and it's at uh, the advanced timing mark, which should look something like this. I don't know if you can see that. It's in the center, so that's your front cylinder advanced timing mark. And we're gonna need that to do the static timing of the ignition. We're gonna take our ignition plate and the rotor and we're going to install the ignition plate right there you see maybe we should clean that up a bit no i'm not going to clean that up you want to feed the wire through the hole here i hope it's long enough though yes like that it should look something like this set it in the middle should be okay like that so once you got the plate back in put the set screws back where they came from just set them lightly you still want to be able to spin the rotor or, or the ignition plate try to get the cable where it's supposed to go now we're going to need the rotor make sure you have the flat side on the right side there's a little pin in there you probably can't see it right now but it's there and it only fits in in one certain way and once you get it in like this, you should be able to rotate it just enough to get your advanced unit to work. So I just took this ignition plate back out a little bit just to see what we're dealing with here. I thought it was not engaging far enough, but looking at it from here, it actually looks quite all right. So we're just gonna work with it and see what we got. So now I've got the points plate back where it should be. Uh, you don't have to worry about the rotation of the points plate just yet. I mean, I've just put it somewhere in the middle. This is gonna be it. Next thing to do is to put the bolt back in. Make sure to use a little Loctite. I've fed the wire through, so we have a blue one and a white one. Uh, we also have two connectors that came with the kit. We're going to crimp those to the cable and then wire the cable to the coil. You're in my breast pocket now, so I don't know if you can see it, but we have the two cables, the blue one and the white one. The blue one is going to go where the old cable was from the point ignition, and the white one is your 12 volt, which is going to the other side of the coil. I mean, it could be uh, the other way around in your bike, but this is how mine is wired. I don't know who wired this. It looks like shit. Actually, I did this. So we should have ignition itch right now. Igni ignition itch. Is that a word? No, I just made that up. To set up your Dyna S ignition, we're gonna need timing light set up the static timing. We already wired the cable from the ignition module to the coil. And if you're gonna use a timing test light like this one, and you're gonna to wanna to put it on the blue wire, which is attached to the coil. So I'm gonna reach through here and put it on the blue wire of the coil, if I can reach it. Can I? I think I can. Yep, it's on there. You're gonna to wanna to connect the test light to ground. So I'm gonna put it right here, see if it'll stay. Hopefully it lights up when we're gonna set the ignition. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn on the ignition. So we're going to turn the plate. Loosen it up a bit. And turn the plate back to where it's not lighting up anymore. Now, because we're in advance, I'm going to advance the weights by turning the rotor. And at the very end of the stroke of the rotor, it's going to be at the most advanced timing. So that's where you want the timing to be because we put the engine on advanced timing. If I turn this all the way to the left, so that's counterclockwise. At the very end of the turn, it should light up my test light. And you want the timing light to really come on at the end of the stroke of the rotor when your weights are in maximum advanced position. So I'm just gonna give it a little bit more. So now when I rotate this rotor counterclockwise, at the end of the stroke, the light doesn't come on. But when I give it a little bit of a nudge further, you see the test light coming on. And that's exactly where you want the points to be. So once you've established that the end of the stroke of the rotor, the very end just turns on your timing light, that's where you want to tighten down the rotor plate screws. So tighten that down. And after you tighten it, just test it again because it might have slipped a little. Turning the rotor counterclockwise, see the light comes on at the very end. That's your static timing 
on a Dyna S or a shovel head. So once you put back the rocker arm covers, you tighten your bolts, make sure that the rotor engages in the right position like we just did. Put back your spark plugs, your plug caps, put back the timing hole plug and we should be able to fire it up. So, anyway, that's how you install an electronic ignition on Java. If you still have any questions, which I'm sure of because I'm an idiot and I can't explain things, uh, just put them down below, I'll try to answer. Uh, if you want to see more of these videos, just follow this account and we'll try to upload anything. Bullshit mostly, but we'll try to upload. Right, see ya.